<laughs> Let's move on to Mass Effect news. Uh, Steve, this is all yours, so take it away. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm super excited for this news. So this past week, we finally got our first kind of like big drop of information for the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, uh, which if you if you if people don't know, it's the remastered package of Mass Effect 1 through 3, the N7 trilogy. Um, this has been a long time coming. I mean, the ma first Mass Effect game came out in 2007 and then kind of uh, wrapped up in 2012. And for a while, it kind of seemed like that was it for that story. Uh, but then during the uh, 2020 Game Awards, they announced that there is going to be a proper follow-up. But before we get to that point, they want to bring those games over to kind of like the modern consoles, which is going to be great. Uh, and now we finally got a, kind of a look at what to, what to really expect. So between what EA and Bioware have said, and then also like some some media reports as well, uh, it's been announced that the game will have all single player content from all three games, including 40 pieces of DLC, which span all three games. Um, all titles are going to be remastered to feature 4K Ultra HD graphics, textures, shaders, all those buzzwords, character models as well. Um, they they released. So we'll get to that. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. No one Unfortunately, it's still running on Unreal Engine 3, which was what they developed uh, the games on for, so no ray tracing, anything like that. But I, I do think that the big thing is is like quality of life and just updating the UI. Um, as people can remember, there was a huge drastic shift between how Mass Effect 1 played, which was more like a clunkier RPG, to Mass Effect 2 and 3, which were a lot more fast-paced and kind of stripped down of those, those like... So it just, it made it feel more fast and more fluid uh, in its gameplay, which is really nice. So EA and Bioware are putting a lot of focus into modernizing Mass Effect 1 to make it feel in line with the sequels. It's not going to be like a top to bottom remake, like Resident Evil 2, for instance, but it's going to feel more in line with the uh, the other two games. And then mm. other quality of life changes that they talked about is that they're going to be expanding the number of like skin colors and hairstyles people can choose when creating their Commander Shepard. Uh, also, Fem Shep will be available to play across all three games. Uh, nice. People who played uh, the originals will remember you, you could only play as Fem Shep in the last game. So now people can actually have some type of a little more ownership when creating their character and not feel restricted in in a lot of ways. Cool. Uh, and then finally, the Mako, which is the the series vehicle, um, it's been updated, so it's not as clunky. And then load times, of course, have been really improved it's been memed to death over the ages but that the elevator rides in the citadel journey mass effect one they were so egregiously long but they were used to cover up loading times uh in that kind of like hub world and back in the day they would be upwards of like a minute of just riding an elevator with you know a little bit of banter going on some news reports going on in the background and then just silence for a good 45 seconds but now they've been sounds decreased. like avengers from a couple of months ago a little bit right <laughs> Thankfully, they've been reduced down to like 14 seconds, which still opens up that those moments where characters can interact well in the elevator, but not so long as you're just sitting there in dead silence. It's uh, kind of unfortunate. And then, yeah, Camille, you, you mentioned it at the top of the show, but it's coming out May 14th. Unfortunately, it's not currently like optimized for current gen consoles, so it is going to be forward compatible, but they are releasing it specifically made for Xbox One and PS4, which is... The only downside, in my opinion, I, I kind of wish that they just went full throttle on doing yeah. current it, gen consoles. But it's it's funny because when you said current gen consoles, I was thinking of the Xbox. The Xbox, yeah, I was that's like, what uh, I was thinking. I was, of. I was like, like, wait, coming out oh, for that's Xbox right. 360? I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, because <laughs> like, when do we? That's the I was going to say major when question. Do when think? do we say yeah. current gen? Because I was saying current gen for so long, and people would be like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like. You know, PlayStation Five, yeah. if only current generation Xbox yeah. One, yeah. Series yeah. X, and then you know, a lot of people are like, "No, that's next gen," and I'm like, oh, "God, dang yeah. it! When when do we, <laughs> please, people out right there, now. let us Today, know?" I, I, mean, I think I think gen. I think it is. Today. I think I mean it, it does make sense because they are the current consoles. So yeah. like. Yeah, 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 but yeah. like I just in my head, I get. I still haven't. You know, I haven't let my brain catch <laughs> up to that it. yet. Yeah. It's like New Year's or Day. Or is it dependent when you go when you exactly. the calendar, yeah. <laughs> and you keep exactly. writing the previous year? Yeah. yeah. Or is it that we have to wait till like a lot of gamers get their hand till like that gen is popularized, right? Like we know a lot of people don't have the PlayStation Five and Xbox Series yeah. X, so maybe that's why. 
possibly. No. Yeah. All I know that yeah. we, yeah. All we, all I know that we need Mass Effect on those consoles. Yeah. Do you think maybe that they will do an upgrade later on? I doubt it. It's, it's. No, the they're gonna move on. See, then that makes me it. not care. Really? I really just care about playing games on my current gen consoles. You well, know what I mean? Like you're still going to be able to. It's going to be forward compatible. It's, it's just not going to be optimized. Ray tracing, not there. Yeah. Fidelity yeah, mode. I need to see it. <laughs> you know. For for me, uh, I never really played the Mass Effect th series. I never really got into it. Oh really? Um, this this is probably a good opportunity for me to to try it out and see what these games are all about. Um, and also, it's good. Like finally, it's not like we've been hearing about this, and there have been rumors yeah. about this for like as long as I can remember. Um, so it's cool to have it finally revealed. Some of the visual upgrades do look really cool. The game overall just has like a nice aesthetic. I'm, I'm looking forward to trying it out. Um, and I guess it makes sense for them to do this, right? They're coming out with a new one at some mm -hmm. point. So yeah. it's about time to do something like this because it's such a an old franchise. When did the first Mass Effect come out? Like 2007. Yeah. And then, Holy smokes. And then that trilogy concluded don't five say, years later. Don't, don't say that's old. <laughs> No, but like it's crazy. Don't say to think it's about old. It. Fourteen God, years. When you ago. say that's old, that makes all of us feel old, Caboose. Okay. I have gray <laughs> hairs. Okay, so I am old. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but like that, it's crazy to think how how like long ago this franchise had started, and yeah. now we're getting another game at some point in the future. So it's nice that they're doing this to kind of refresh people's memories or introduce people to the yeah. franchise in general, mm -hmm. uh, like myself. So yeah. I'm looking forward to trying it out and just uh, seeing where they continue the story mm -hmm. in this next game. Yeah, it's yeah. also kind and, of and a redemption pretty... arc. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's kind of a redemption yes. arc because yeah, yeah. they did release a new title, which was Andromeda, and mm. oh, uh, yeah. um, that's so they did publish a totally new game. Forgot about that. Yeah, and it was looking good. I mean, it lacked everything else but right. it was looking good so if we have the same scenario and story and depths from the first trilogy with the graphics of andromeda it's kind of their only redemption chance because if it doesn't work like that it's over with mass effect they're not going to release a new one after two failed titles totally. and i think that's what a lot of publishers do i was going to say like i'm looking at the comparison of the original and the legendary edition like mm -hmm. the upgrades actually do look really good um the detail that they put in into like more forestry areas and yeah. stuff like that um that looks really cool again i'm just thinking i would really want to see that on you know <laughs> the series x that'd be really cool um mm -hmm. but i feel like a lot of publishers when they have that title that in a series like mass effect that has this huge uh, fan base you kind of need to lean on the nostalgia if the last title didn't do that well, right? And that's what they're doing with this Legendary Edition. They're trying to get back their fans to, for whenever we see that other Mass Effect game, um, hopefully have them come in and make that a success. No, absolutely. Like After playing Andromeda, the first thing I wanted to do was just go back to these old games. But at the same point, I was like, well, I don't want to plug in my 360, boot it all up again. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait patiently until EA inevitably brings these to the the console. I thought they were I thought they were going to do something kind of like the Arkham collection. Oh, okay. They'd be like, "Okay, here's just support. Bring it over." I was like, "Okay, that's fine." But yeah. to kind of get an upgrade in sorts, get 4K H Ultra HD graphics, like this is what I've been waiting for and I can't wait to sink in like 200 hours into this and caboose i'm so excited for you to finally go through this because okay it, in all honesty i think <laughs> I, I i do really think that this trilogy is one of the best of like the 360 ps3 generations like the the character interactions they're hey okay. the rpgs as general i mean it's one of the best yeah it's what it was one of the first game where you really had an impact on the story and yeah. that was groundbreaking mm -hmm. i mean for now it's kind of basic but that was mass effect like you do something and you kill someone and he stays dead and that's that was rare in video games oh absolutely like i struggled to think of another game where in the first one if you save someone they'll show up in the second game and be like oh wow remember me kind of thing or if you kill that same person in the first game they won't be there in the second one like the progress carry carrying over was something i i didn't think was really possible in games or really thought that 
it would be needed. It, it was just revolutionary in my mind at the time. Yeah. But even you think of that now, like a lot of games still don't do that. Um, yeah. That's something that really hasn't uh, carried forward in terms of your yeah. progression from your previous game, really having an impact on the characters you interact with within, you know, it's uh, within the second game or, mm. you know, the third game. So it, it's going to be interesting. I think a lot of new fans, a lot of younger people who have not um, heard of Mass Effect, I feel like they should really market that point home because it's mm -hmm. still something that's very unique in gaming that you don't experience. I think a lot of people are going to want to hop into this, like Caboose, like well, that, that collector's has... edition. Yeah, yeah, yo, yes, With the helmet? let's the talk helmet? about that. Let's go. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> so it has a replica wearable N7 helmet with mm -hmm. LED light effects, steel okay. case, art prints, an enamel spinner pin. N7 acceptance letter. I, I'm a, I am such a nerd for like any piece of like acceptance <laughs> letter, something that's like straight from the game um, and a full color box. So like, but it doesn't come with the game. <laughs> Why are they doing this with collector's editions nowadays? I don't it's know. So weird. They when did this you, become a thing? They give you <laughs> the steel case. So when you buy the game, you take it out of the plastic case and then you put it into the steel you throw case. Throw that one away, yeah. And then you throw the plastic away. Recycle, of course. Yes, yeah. yes, sorry. Yeah. Throw it in the Does blue. Does that bin. not blow anybody's mind? It's like we're gonna it make a collector's really edition weird. and we're gonna have the case that the game would come in, but we will not give you the game. <laughs> Maybe they started doing that because what? marketing, right? They would have to add the price of the game to mm -hmm. that, um, you know, the uh, so. legendary edition, um, like the cachet, they're calling it the legendary cachet. Right. So I think that's a harder sell. It looks like the price is like, oh my God, it's going to be like 200 something dollars, right? Um, whereas if they separate the two, but, but at the end of the day, like if you're already forking over like 260 bucks for a collector's edition of a game, that means you're like you are committed and are mm. a hardcore fan of the game or really want the items within it. So at that point, it's like <laughs> just throw the game in there and and toss the extra 60 yeah. bucks to the price. Like I, I've, if I'm all in, I'm all in, you know? Right. Yeah. Imagine if someone bought this thinking they were getting the game too. They're like, oh my God, this is the deal of a lifetime. Oh my lifetime. God, and they open the steel book me... and nothing's in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, That's oh awful. no, man. Oh no, that's horrible. But you're absolutely right. It doesn't make sense. And I don't, I'm trying to think when was the last game that, or like collector's edition that I got where the game actually came with it. I think and Doom I can't had remember. It. Doom had it with the Doom helmet and everything oh, for yeah, Doom yeah. Eternal. Did it? Oh yes, so, you're yeah. right. You're right. I don't know. I don't they have did. a lot. Yeah, I, I haven't did. gotten a lot of collector's editions. The main ones that I've only gotten are for like Mortal Kombat 11. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean those those do those with come with us? Yeah, yeah, those do come with the game, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I I don't know. I guess it's just how they decide to market it. It doesn't make sense. But also, yeah. like maybe they should give you like some sort of benefit when you buy the actual game. Like maybe there's a code in the collector's edition that like gives you, usually they do. I don't know. I just am, I'm heartbroken that that other case that thinks that it's going to hang out in your living room for the rest of eternity is just going to get thrown to the blue bin. Yeah. Because you have the steel case now. Yeah. The ultimate double cross right there yep rip 100%. all the plastic cases yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh steve so obviously mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. steve mm -hmm. obviously you're a fan of <laughs> mass effect yeah uh would you get the collector's edition do you like how many people here actually get the collector's editions of i never do me, no. me neither me neither no. well i do uh, there, listen, the same not, price not to like i'm not trying to like brag or anything but like a lot of stuff gets sent in here and there's okay, not a fine. lot of space. <laughs> right. There is That's not right. a lot of space. So I don't have like room to make purchases for collector's editions and stuff. <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. I thought you would have definitely got one of the Arkham collector's editions. Okay. I will say uh, I worked with Triforce. Way, if anyone remembers Triforce from before they like shut down and had to sell all their stuff. But I worked with them way back in the day. And they sent me the giant like Batman hand. Oh, that's amazing. If you've ever seen mm. that. Yeah. With the battery yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's locked away in our in our locker now. I might find some space for it at some point, but yeah. that thing is cool. <laughs> the thing is heavy, <laughs> it is fragile, but it is cool. Um, Quality. Yeah. 
but yeah, yeah no, in, I don't know. It, I wasn't really into like the collection edition stuff for games. No, uh, living in a Toronto condo for so long, I have to take like every centimeter and make sure that it's being used for a purpose. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, so like collector's edition stuff like this, like obviously the helmet is is cool and everything, but at the same time, like yeah, it's gonna be novel to wear, maybe even on a stream one or once or twice for a squad cast, but then it's just gonna end up in a closet or something just to get rid of it, right? Yeah. So uh, I I always defer to just I don't even buy physical games to be honest. Like I can't even remember the last time I bought a that's physical game. I'm, you I, bought I just one uh, S right or a Series S. I mean right. Well, I or, have or both. You got one I have both. Yeah, yeah I, I got one sent, and then I have the Series X as yeah. well. But like, I, I just always go digital to begin with. So usually, Ooh, we'll make... no, you're killing me. You're killing me. I I'm just like, you're killing me, Smalls. Well. Yeah. <laughs> they like, I don't know. No, who, I who love. I love of, just of holding, taking out the disc and and switching it out, and knowing where the disc. Yeah. Like that. Okay, yeah. I don't. Okay. I don't read a lot of well, I I read books, but they're like the Hyrule Historia. <laughs> like that's what I read, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so like for me, a bookshelf, like having something where I could put games on, like seeing that collection of games that I've gone through, that like is just something that's so nostalgic for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but then of course I have the issue. So when I moved here, I have all my old games from all of my uh previous consoles so like the snes the dreamcast you know like um from the playstation one playstation two playstation three xbox one you know like all those and then trying to figure out where they go that was the hardest part like i have some underneath the um compartment in my couch like just hiding there no one really knows about it but if now i guess people know about it <laughs> and um, in, in the garage like there's there games are everywhere now and i feel like maybe i have to go digital but there's still a piece of me that always just wants to see that physical copy yeah, yeah. I mean, once you try um, it out it's so easy to just keep exactly going. Like, it depends on the games like sometimes you want to get the physical one because you hold it dear like it's special for you but other times yeah better go I digital yeah, I thought that. I, I mean, I bought like the Halo Master Chief collection. I was like, wow, this is so cool to have all these games on one desk. And now I just look at it on my on my shelf. I'm like, whatever. I, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, like I uninstalled that version and downloaded the Game Pass version because I was like, OK, great. Now I have all of them digitally. <laughs> so it just sits there without a use. Damn. <laughs> oh I appreciate your honesty. It's just like one of those buys. You're like, why did I do this? What when I have it here? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I guess that's all. That's all a part of the growing pains of being a gamer. With yeah, the game and the game. Game. Yeah. Yep. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel <laughs> that. that I didn't <laughs> all right. Um, while I go through all the pains, maybe organize some of the cases I have for games. Uh, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. <laughs> 